left off uh, just kind of working on our menu system last week. Yep. And uh, you've got everything up on your screen there. All ready to go. You want to pull up a uh, desktop presenter for me just so that uh, we can bring uh, up your, your computer screen if we need yeah. to as well. And uh, on my system here I have the files from the 184 file uh, off of cat5.tv slash webdev. It contains my index.php, which I'm opening into gedit. And it contains my style.css, which I'm also going to uh, load up in there. Welcome to the show, JC Developments. Nice to have you here. So where we left off is uh, with our menu there, which we just kind of mocked up. Haha, <laughs> mocked up. <laughs> but it is text now, you see. So if we bring up our, uh, our browser, we go demo.cat5.tv. We're going to jump into the folder 002. And you see this is where we're at. So the menu is no longer an image. It's actually a graphical or a, te a text-based menu. So we can start making these into um, clickable links. One of the things when we're developing a website is we want to make sure that it's search engine optimized. So this contains a lot of text and things that the search engines are going to pick up on. Uh, one of the key things with your menu navigation system is that it, it really needs to be text. And uh, if it's not text, if you're going to go with images, um, there had, had really better be a good reason to do that, um, be it a, a super fancy font or a button that just absolutely cannot be uh, created using CSS and images uh, with text overlaid or something like that. Um, so there really needs to be a good reason for that, and you need to use alt tags and uh, title tags in a case like that. Because the search engines are going to be looking through your file and they're going to find uh, only the text, the images are not necessarily going to get indexed the same way. So if I have a button that's, for example, about a spire place, um, then that is going to be uh, the name of that link, basically, as far as the search engines are concerned. So it, it's going to boost the, the standings of that search query. If it's just an image that says about a spire place, and they, it's still clickable, but it's not going to have the same weight in the search engines. The search engines are really looking at your front page uh, of the website as this is what my business is. It's very important that that mm -hmm. initial, you know, just like the the whole first impressions thing, right? For with people, a search engine gets on your website, and when it gets to category five dot TV, that has to say what the show is about and what is going on with this site. So the search engines say, okay, that's what category five dot TV is. All the sub pages, yeah, they need to be optimized too. But there, that's content within Category 5.tv. So Category 5.tv slash blog, uh, my blog, for example, is not going to carry the same weight as just Category 5.tv. So our home page needs to be uh, pretty rich with text. And, and I want to tell you these things because I want you to be able to build a site that's going to do well in the search engines and also perform well uh, across multiple different platforms. So that's one of the reasons why we're going with text only here. So then you say, well, it just doesn't look the way that the mock-up did. So let's bring up our mock-up, which you'll find in your file under the raw folder. You can open that into Photoshop if you have it. You can open it in the, into the free GIMP application from GIMP.org. Uh, if you'd like to get that, it's available for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you see that our menu here is all caps, and it is uh, just a white text, whereas on our website, it's coming in at, uh, in a different way. Now, uh, Krista, do you know what uh, what font that you used for that menu there? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's just Arial. Just Arial? Yeah. Okay, and it just was all caps there. So, so what we can do now, it's it's defaulting to like a, I don't know, it looks like a Times New Roman or something, which we definitely don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our CSS, and that uh, that ID, as we remember, is menu. So that text is actually falling in our index.php within the div id equals menu. So with the menu CSS style, we can now start controlling what this is going to look like. So for example, color colon pound FFF, which is the same as saying FFF FFF. So again, to, for the sake of making a smaller file, we're going to go FFF. Reason for that is, to kind of quickly explain how that works, it, to shorten uh, hexadecimal color code to three characters instead of six, which doesn't seem like a lot, you're only saving three bits of data, uh, but in a huge CSS file, once your file gets quite large, it's going to it's going to amount to you know it could be kilobits of uh, or kilobytes of, of 
data, which is, which translates into kilobits of download time and, and things like that. So, what how that works is the color white is f f f f f f. Okay. So to shorten that, you see f f f f f f. It all matches. So that way, I can go like that. Similarly, if it, if my color were I'm just going to make something up. I don't even know if it's a real color. PD, uh, like that. Okay. Let's just pretend that that's a color. So that could be like that because the the DDs all matched up. However, if it was like I don't know, give me a color, anything at all. Let's use our color up here. Do we have one? Yeah. Oh, and it's eight. Well, that's a, that's a good example because see this one. You might think that you could go, okay, well now that one can become 800, but it can't because what that actually represents is 88, 0, 0, 0, 0, because it goes in twos, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, or 8, 8. So if I were to do it this way, it's the wrong color. So this particular color, that's why up here we've had to leave that as six characters as opposed to down here when it's FFF, we can leave that as three characters. So that's just a little small small trick. Um, and of course, you can use the GIMP to generate these color codes. If you're not sure what, uh, what to use, bring up the GIMP and get in here to your color uh, palette here and just click on your foreground. Where did we go? There we go. And now we've got this kind of swatch thing where you can drag your cursor around and change the color. So if I wanted that color of red, you'll see over here, there's the actual color, okay? If I wanted white, down at the bottom, there's the color, and there we go, all Fs, okay? So that is obtained by clicking on my color swatch. Pardon me. So what we need to do, okay, so now what I've done is I've colorized that white. So let's uh, bring up our FTP application. I'm gonna upload those changes to our, uh, our website itself, okay? Now, at the end of the series, we're actually going to be able to offer you uh, web hosting at a discounted price as well. Um, so if you're considering developing a website, uh, then you uh, will want to stick around for that uh, coming up in a future segment uh, for the web development site. We're just working on that right now, getting a partnership with the hosting company. Uh, but that will be in place for you. So, And we're going to try to make sure that that's as substantial as possible. So. That's very cool. Yeah, just so you know. So don't go out buying web hosting uh, just yet for your... <laughs> for your uh, website, we'll be able to hook you up with a good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new folder here on our host that says, uh, that's 003. And perhaps, Eric, if, uh, if it would be possible, if you, if you see anything that's relevant in the chat room coming through uh, that I may miss just because we're coding away, then just, uh, just let me know, um, right. as long as it's relevant to the web development uh, that we're doing. Okay, so I've uploaded that to 003 now. Okay. And I'm going to upload. Okay, so I've got my style sheet now uploaded. I'm going to close the GIMP because I'm done with that. And let's get back to our website. So you're looking at 002. Let's change over to 003. Now you'll see that menu. Let's see. Did I save that? I didn't save it. See the star up there? <laughs> okay, so we've got color on menu is FFF. All right, now I'm going to upload that with my FTP application. That's just the style sheet. Style.css. And now back at our website. If I re refresh, you'll see that the color is now turned to a perfect white. Okay. So now you're saying that that's Arial. So Here's where things are a little bit different than HTML. We're going to go font family Arial, for example. Okay. Now it's going to we're going to expand it from there, but we're just going to get this started. Now most people are going to have Arial, but we got to keep in mind that some people may not. Okay. So I'm uploading that and refreshing. And you'll see the font has now changed to Arial. Okay. So what we'll want to do is just get online, get onto you know your favorite search engine, and just do a search for um, font family, Arial. 
And what you're going to find is that people have made some suggestions as to what uh, what would be a good font family property for the Arial font. So click around on some of those, and uh, here's someone who's using Arial as the default, Helvetica as the fallback, and Sans Serif as you know if. If the user doesn't have either of those, it's going to default to whatever the, the default system sans serif font is. So that, to me, that sounds reasonable. That sounds good. Um, so let's paste that into our uh, CSS here. OK. So it's going to look like that. I'm going to clean up that. OK. So that's what we end up with. I'm going to upload that. And learn to use the the web as a as a resource because sometimes you'll come across stuff where it's like oh well you know how do we do this or that with CSS how do I take that font for example let's just say we want to do a font transformation I can do a quick uh, search for CSS all caps for example so what I want to show you is not to be afraid to use things like Google and whatever search engine you use and you and say oh yeah okay I could do text transform for example and go uppercase okay so while while I know that you can use that as a resource you know what I mean like it's not you don't have to know every little CSS trick you don't have to say oh well Robbie knew how to do that um, but I don't know how to do that, so I can't replicate this. Use the search engines as a resource so that you can say, okay, well, can I use CSS to go all caps? And here with one of our first results has taken us to w3schools.com, and we've got this text transform command. So let's jump back to our CSS file here. And within menu, okay, I'm going to just simply paste that in. Text transform, uppercase, okay? You see how picky I am about my code. I'm always going to have a space after the colon, things like that. All right, so I've pasted that in. You can type it in because you know it now. I'm going to upload my style sheet, and you'll see now, without having touched my index.php, and without having actually coded all caps into this, when I refresh, it's now all caps. Okay. But the interesting thing is, if I hit Control U in Firefox to view the source, and then look at how it's actually being output, it is not all caps. So what's happening is, is that CSS is using the tr text transform property to now convert that visually to the browser as all caps. So you're not yelling at the search engines when they do a, an index of your site. Um, they're seeing, the search engines will actually see it as the regular case, uh, which is kind of interesting. So next up, we need to actually be able to make links out of our menu. This episode of Category 5 TV is brought to you by Pogoplug, available at cat5.tv slash Pogoplug, and of course, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. And do make sure you check out our sponsors. Uh, that encourages them to, uh, to support Category 5, and of course, their support is a large part of what uh, helps us to be able to do what we do here. Um, so again, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug, and cat5.tv slash Calypso. Cool? Uh -huh. All right, so we've got our menu basically uh, programmed in there, ready to go. All right, it's looking good. And if you're following along, it's demo.cat5.tv slash 003. But right now, there's, there's nothing there but text. It's not actually doing anything. So we want to actually create links, for example. We don't have any pages yet, so we can't actually make them go anywhere. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, here's how we make a link in uh, HTML. A href equals, and we're going to just go to, to pound because that's not going to go anywhere. Normally we would go index.php, which we can do with home because that's exactly where it's going to go. Okay. For about us, let's use the hash because we don't want it to go anywhere just yet. We are going to change that and we don't need etc. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what it's looking like so far. Now, what's going to happen to our CSS when we upload this? You're going to see something happen here. And if you're refreshing on the website, you'll see already that our menu now looks kind of off. Oh, and I'll upload index.php. Here we go. There. 
So now you see we've lost our styling, we've lost the color of our menu, and that's because now this is actually a, a link, and so it's being interpreted a little bit differently than uh, just plain text. So the only thing that's being interpreted the way that our CSS asks it to is that little separator in the middle, the pipe. Okay? So in order to, to change that, now what we want to do, if we want the style to be the same, okay, I'm going to go menu, and then I'm going to go comma, pound menu, which is the, in the uh, menu ID, and we're going to go A. All right, so that's link, basically. Um, and this is just to keep it real simple, okay? So that is now going to colorize, if I upload my style.css, that's going to colorize those links as white. Okay? But now what we want to do is we want to actually fix the fact that it's showing with an underline as well. Okay? So where we want to go is the same place. We're going to go um, text decoration, none. I just want to get rid of the underline is what I want. So that's gone. Now I need to determine what's going on with our spacing here. I'm going to throw the border back on to our menu just to see what's happening here. See if it's gone and gotten real narrow on us. No, it hasn't. But it is spaced a little bit oddly. The A is getting the 100%. Okay, so what, what I've done there, and this is you know troubleshooting as we program, is I've created a bit of a, an issue there because my menu ID has a specified width. Okay, so if you have something like this occur, you know that, okay, well I've specified that this carry the same as menu, and so now my link is that wide as well, so that's causing a big problem. So to fix that, what I want to do is I want to separate out these two elements. So menu is going to become a wrapper, and A is going to be outside of that wrap, uh, is, is going to be inside of it, but it's not going to have a width specified. Okay, so I'm going to grab those those things that I needed there. Okay, I'm going to change the color again to white because this is a different element. This is now the link on menu, but see I've separated those out so that the link no longer has the width specified. Okay. So let's see how that works. I'm going to upload that. It's just my style.css. Sample site is demo.cat5.tv slash 003 for tonight. And now if I refresh, you'll see that my menu is back to where it was. However, now these things are links. I guess you can't really see that because um, it hides my cursor. However, if I click, you see that it does create a border around it because it is a link. Okay. So next up, let's get a little bit more fancy. Let's change our color of the menu. If I if I may, Krista, this is your creative baby, right? Oh well, I don't know about what that. What I'm gonna then. do? What I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna just take it down to a, a slightly less vibrant white. Okay, so we want to have a little bit of a, a rollover effect. So let's take that and we'll try all A's and just see how gray that is. Again, you can use the GIMP uh, or Photoshop to use your color palette. So now that's changed it to a bit of a gray. Probably a bit too gray for your liking. What do you think? Um, yeah, maybe sitting on top of the red. Red's kind of a tricky color to yeah. put. Neutrals let's on try, top of. Let's let's go happy medium. CCC is in between AAA and FFF. <laughs> okay. And there. So it's just a slight gray. But what's going to change here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Here we are. 
sorry, I'll, I'll show you what CCC looks like here. Okay? So now back at our CSS, without having to do any JavaScript or anything like that, we're going to just go menu a hover. Okay, we're going to create a new thing here. And notice we're not having to create new IDs because this is all happening within menu. That's that div. And it's happening to the link, and it's happening when I hover. Color FFF. Okay. Now upload that. So what I've told it to do is that when I hover my mouse over that link, I want it to change from CCC to FFF. CSS allows us to do things like that. So now when I hover my mouse over it, it's actually changing the color. See? So you get that little bit of a, a rollover effect. You can also do things like uh, if you want to add like an effect like a, an underline that shows up when you hover over. Okay. Sometimes that's a nice clean effect kind of thing. So, um, so we're getting through the navigation system, the CSS as it is. And uh, while visually it doesn't look like we're making a lot of progress, this is all part of the process of creating a website. So here we have our navigation system in place. It's ready to start receiving you know, our menu items. But for now, we're just going to leave that as a placeholder. And we're going to jump back to our mock-up here and see where we need to go next. We've got that wood grain, right? So let's get started with positioning that wood grain. Jump over to our images folder. And there it is there. Wood grain underscore BG is 950 by 275, which I'm going to have to refer to again. OK, but I'm going to go rename that. And I'm just going to copy the I've copied the name to clipboard. I'm loading up index.php. And we remember from uh, previous segments in this series what that file does. And we're going to go outside of, see where div ID menu opens. Now it closes there. So I want to create a, a new line there, OK? Because this slash div is actually closing the wrapper. And we need everything to happen within that wrapper. So we're going to now create a new div. And uh, we'll call this header. I don't think we've used that yet. And we're going to uh, add an NBSP, which is a non-breaking space. OK. Basically an empty character. It's something invisible so that it just is a placeholder. So now in our CSS file, I'm just going to move down a little bit here and uh, we're going to create the new header okay we're going to go height and again our height is going to be the height of woodgrainbg.jpg at 275 pixels okay just like that and now if we upload that file Notice that I've only put a red border of one pixel around that just to show me where it's landing. And we add nothing there because I didn't upload index.php, which contains the div. Don't forget. Technical difficulties. Well, if you no, <laughs> not even. Like I mean, if you ever think, hey, why isn't it showing up? There's probably something that you've done. <laughs> Obviously so. So you'll see that this is now being placed up at the very, very top of the site. And that's because of the way that the divs are being positioned. So uh, like because the fact that we have, let's see, we have a logo floating left. And we've got a menu floating right. So what we need to do is we need to tell our header, let's see if this does it. We want to clear both, which is to clear both our left and right. Let's just see if that's going to put our positioning in the right spot. There we go. Okay. So if you understand what happened there, this is flo the, our logo is floating left, our menu is floating right. When we created a new div, it was in the middle, technically. So it ended up on top of both of the other ones because it wasn't floating at all. So it's at the very, very top of the page. Now I told it clear both, which means take the left and the right and then uh, clear that so that you're now um, clear of those two elements and now our border is falling 
in the right place. So we're going to uh, implement our wood grain. So we're going to go background, URL, images, wood grain bg.jpg. Okay, just like that. And now I'm going to say no repeat, because there isn't going to be any repeating on that. We don't have to specify a position for it because everything it's going to fill the entire element. So now, if we save that and upload style.css, remember I'm not having to change anything in my index at this point because I'm just doing it all through CSS. And now it's going to slap that wood grain in there with the red border. So now we want to remove the red border from that because that was just a placeholder to tell us where this was going to land. There we go. And upload our style.css file. And refresh. And now we're starting to come together with the way that our website is going to look. Which, uh, for this week, I'm pretty happy with the progress mm -hmm. as far as that Coming goes. Coming along. Yeah. It's starting to take shape. And... Starting to look like, uh, like your website and your mock-up. 